Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jeff Shaner, and I'm the product manager for Workforce for ArcGIS. And with me here is uh, Craig Gilgrass. He's our demo monkey for the day. We got to get it, we got to get this this over with early. We can kind of do some back and forth, so just be prepared for some ugliness as we get going. Um, we're here to talk to you today about a new product called Workforce for ArcGIS. Has anyone here used the beta version of Workforce for ArcGIS yet? A couple of you. Um, can I have the show of hands for all the rest of you? <laughs> I'm very disappointed in you. Um, Workforce for ArcGIS has been in beta since January 12th, and uh, we're getting set to release the first version of it uh, next week. Uh, and we want to spend some time talking about it today. How many people here use Collector? All of you should be using Workforce with Collector. I'll just say that right now. Um, but I wanted to start by talking about our strategy around apps briefly. Um, I'm sure that you saw this in the plenary. Um, were, you, were you all here for the plenary? I'm just going to make you raise your why, hand. Why are you asking so many questions? <laughs> why are you asking <laughs> questions know. now? It's very odd. I'm the one to ask the questions. Shouldn't this be a survey one, two, three question? <laughs> you're asking so many questions? Potentially. Yeah. Well, I wanted to point something out. Uh, there was a presentation by Auckland, uh, was it City of Auckland or Auckland County? I'm not helping you. No, you got to help me now. No, you're, you're getting into this. There you go. What's that? It was the city of Auckland. Yeah, OK. I wasn't sure if it was uh, an organization within the city or if it was the city itself. Clearly, you went to the plenary. Watch it. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, they showed how our apps integrate together, uh, and starting with workforce, uh, being able to plan the work that they do in the field, uh, being able to use Navigator to get to the location of the work they do, being able to use Collector uh, to collect data at that location. Uh, and then really you can monitor all of that uh, in real time using our operations dashboard app. And so we're working towards a strategy that's not just specific to a, an application or a product, but more about how you complete your field operations and how we can make that uh, more efficient for you as GIS professionals, supporting your, uh, your field staff and the different business units that you support. Uh, and um, I might be a little bit biased, but I think workforce is a really important step in that direction. So let's introduce it. Workforce is really about field workforce optimization, and it starts inside of the, the ArcGIS platform. Um, there's a web application that uh, Craig is going to show you that you can use to create what we call a workforce project. And it quickly gets you up and running with the ability to plan and assign work to your field teams. Um, inside of that project, you can define the different types of work you do. You can associate the uh, field workers and their named user identities as part of that project and add value to them like things like their contact information and be able to log where they are and know where they're working. So there's some really um, ad, big added value uh, from using the workforce application inside of your organization. Uh, it also includes the ability to use collector, or sorry, use workforce on your mobile device. Uh, we're building it on all the platforms. Uh, when we release uh, next week, it'll be on the iOS platform. It's our most, most mature platform. We have Android in beta right now as well. And within a month, uh, Windows 10 will be joining that beta as well. And uh, Android and um, Windows 10 will release this fall. Uh, and, and join iOS as released products. Um, we have a number of customers that are um, actually using Workforce, the beta version of it, in production inside of their organizations today. It really scares the hell out of us because it's in beta, but they got it rolling and they're using it um, in their daily jobs now because it's just added so much value. Uh, on the mobile application, it's really, like I said, that app hub. It gives you uh, the list of things that you need to do each day. Um, it organizes that work, and then it, um, it remotely controls uh, the other mobile applications that are on it. It also um, is your coordination tool. It lets you coordinate between yourself and the other mobile workers that are out in the field, and also with your back office, so that um, they know when you're ready to take new work on, they know your working status, they know uh, where you are when you're completing the work you're doing. 
Uh, and also inside of uh, the workforce app, for that assignment that you need to do, maybe you're doing it with Collector, but you're actually getting the assignment work um, from a work management system, perhaps, uh, you can attach reference information that's it's really um, needed for the job at hand. It could be a PDF document that gives you information about the specific tasks to do a hydrant flush operation, uh, if that's the inspection work you need to do. Uh, or it could be a set of photos about the area that you're uh, heading towards um, that you, you need as background reference information about the task at hand. Um, so Workforce provides that additional reference information that gets you started. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Craig to get you, not get you started right yet. I guess he's not ready. Are you not ready, Craig? No, you went through those slides way too fast. <laughs> Would you like me to talk some more? OK, pass it over. OK, it's all you know. <laughs> all right, thanks, Jeff. Um, so yeah, like Jeff mentioned, I'm going to take you through um, Workforce for ArcGIS <laughs> and, and um, show you what we built and um, talk a little bit about what's in the beta right now and what's coming in, in the first release that Jeff mentioned we're working on now and, and also a little bit about what's coming in the future. So I want to warn you though, the last time he did this demo, it lasted 45 minutes. So you might want to get comfortable. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk the whole time this time. So. <laughs> Um, so when we, uh, what you're seeing here is um, the Workforce web application. So Workforce is actually two apps in one. You get the web application that we see here, and you also get the mobile app that I'm going to show in just a little bit. Now the reason that we have two apps for Workforce is because we've got multiple roles within an organization for managing field operations. When we first started the project about a year and a half ago, we would go to sites and talk to them about how they do their field operations. Um, and you know, really one of the common themes we heard was that there's three roles within a field ops situation at a lot of organizations. There's the field worker themselves, so the people who go out into the field to complete the work that they're given. There's the people in the central office, the dispatcher or the supervisor. This is the person who could be responsible for creating assignments, um, maybe managing assignments, reassigning work. They might have a mixture of, of responsibilities in that regard, right? And not, not in every organization is a dispatcher or supervisor creating work. They might just be monitoring and reassigning the workload and managing in that way. But really the common theme we heard was that there is that one role um, that's shared by one to many people who are responsible for, for the management of the field workers and the, the work that's being assigned to them. The last one is the GIS admin or the project owner, the person who's responsible for creating everything that is a workforce project. So I'm gonna talk about those three different roles um, as, as we go over this, um, the next, uh, I guess I'm doing 45 minutes of this demo. <laughs> so, uh, so, like I said, this is the Workforce web application, and right now I'm acting as the dispatcher. So I'm logged into a particular Workforce project that I have here, uh, and I'm looking at the dispatcher view of the system. One of the common themes we heard for dispatchers was that they work with lists. That list could be an Excel spreadsheet, they create lists for workers in the field to have their to-do list to take with them, but they're very comfortable with a list of work that needs to be handled. And you can see that on the left-hand side of the screen here. I've got a list of all of the currently assigned work that's in this particular project. You can see that I've got a little bit of information associated with it that gets me um, sort of a bird's eye view or almost like an executive summary of what that work assignment is. I can see the type of work that's being done, its location, in this case it's an address, uh, I can see when it's due, uh, and then also a little bit other information, including who it's assigned to, um, and some other notes. Yeah, you'll see that some of this work is uh, a little stagnant. It's due a couple months ago. The reason for that is because this is actually a project from one of our beta users right now. This is a snapshot that we got from them uh, about two months ago um, when we were starting to build up for the user conference. Uh, and this is actually the data they're using right now. So this particular customer that we have um, and they went out and they said, you know, we want to implement workforce and, and look at a good solution for it. And what they did is they chose a meter exchange program. So that's what we've got here, right? So you're looking at all of the different meter exchanges that this dispatcher is responsible for, um, for assigning and getting to their workers in the field. So you can see on the map here, I get a collection of information. I can see um, a collection of assignments here on the map. If we zoom back out, we'll see the clustering kick back in, and you can see I also see some worker locations up on the right-hand screen. 
So for the dispatcher, they're able to see where all the assignments are located, in this case, the meter exchanges. They're also able to see the location of their workers and also some indication about their status, whether they're working or not. And that's what you see here with the different symbology that we're using. So green means that the worker is online or working and available for work. Gray means they're offline, not working. We also have the concept of the worker being able to set themselves on a break. Okay? So the worker is able to really quickly and easily uh, communicate that information back to the central office. So one of the themes I'm talking about here is that the dispatcher has all the information they need here to make decisions. They can see what that assignment is, get a really good view of it. They can see the location of it on the map, and they can see the location of it with relation to the workers in the field as well. So let's go and open up one of these assignments so we can take a look at what it looks like. So you can see I've got a little bit more information here. I still see the same sort of information that we had in the list. I've got the type of work, the address, when it's due. I can also see when it was created. I can get its status as well, whether it's assigned, in progress, declined. I can see who it's assigned to. And if I wanted to, I could reassign it to this point. But I also get a little bit more information about the work that needs to be done here. I can add in some information about what type of meter it is that's being worked on. Uh, and then I could also go and attach some information to it as well. When we go to different sites and talk to them about, you know, how do you do field operations today? One of our first questions is, let's see the piece of paper that you use for managing it, for paper work orders, for service requests, whatever it might be. We took that piece of paper from several different users and we pulled together a lot of the common pieces of information that we saw on it. And that's where we came up with this list of what's included in an assignment. One of the other common themes though, uh, and just to head back to assignments, was it's not just about that piece of paper, right? About what they have to do. There's also a lot of supporting documentation that goes with work assignments in the field. That's what the attachments are here for. So this assignments feature service that we have running behind workforce is also has attachments enabled on it. So you can go and attach PDF files or photos to that assignment, and then the worker will get those on their mobile device and be able to access them and view them. So the idea is trying to take that work packet of information, the work order description or the work assignment description that they have on the piece of paper, and any other supporting documentation, and get that to them on their mobile device and deliver it to them. All right, so we talked a little bit about the list that we see on the left-hand side, the map that we've got here. Another concept that I want to talk about quickly is the two different types of work that we hear about quite commonly. This is a great example of pre-planned work. The people at this particular customer went into their management system, whatever it might be, an asset maintenance customer system, and they said, we need to identify all the meters we have to exchange this year. They did that in their other system. They came out with almost 5,000 meters that they want to exchange. They took those 5,000 meters and they loaded them into the workforce project, and that's what they're working on. If we clear that, you'll see a whole bunch of assignments come up and, and displayed on the screen. You can see we've got a little over 1,000 of them here. They made the decision of if that's the work they're going to do. That's a great example of pre-planned work. Someone at some point made a decision about the work that needed to be done, and they loaded that into the workforce project. But there's a second type of work that happens in the field. That's unplanned or unscheduled work. Now this wouldn't really happen in a meter exchange program, but I can still demonstrate it to you here. A lot of cases you're gonna get reports coming in from the field throughout the day that something has to be handled. Uh, maybe there was an accident and a hydrant was um, run over and destroyed and there's water streaming everywhere and someone has to handle it. Maybe the city councilor, if you work for a city, called you and said, can you please go take care of that issue that a particular resident of mine calls every single day about? Just go take care of that today, can you? So that's a really great example of unscheduled work. And with the Workforce web application, you can also create work assignments as well. So I've shown the dispatcher being able to look at the current set of work assignments, see where their workers are. They can also come in and create the work. So I can go in and choose the type of work that they're gonna be doing. I can go and set a location for that work. I could choose to assign it if I need to, or leave it unassigned. I can go and set a priority for it, or a due date and time. Now when we talk to people, what we commonly heard was that there's different ways you characterize the work in terms of when it should be done. Sometimes you use a relative scale like priority, other times you use due date and time, sometimes you use neither, and sometimes you use both of them. So we're giving you the option to really choose what fits for your particular scenario. The other thing I wanna highlight here is this field called the work order ID. 
Um, another common theme we heard was that whatever you call this, work order ID, service request, ticket number, whatever it might be, you've got an identifier within your organization that follows work around through the system. Maybe it's generated from another system and it follows that work in as it gets loaded. Maybe you generate it right here. Okay? But the idea is that this is the identifier that within the overall organization or within your company or your, um, your site identifies what work needs to be done. So you can go and add that here. We don't populate this field. We leave it for you to do and enter whatever you like. You could make this unique and only make sure that certain values get in it. Or you could enter in a whole bunch of values, maybe a common delimited string that you'd like to have it follow along. You can go and enter also the description for it. Um, one of the common themes when we saw this paper work order that people were getting, uh, the work assignment, was everybody has a big field for what to do, right? There's just this big area on the paper that says, here's the stuff you've got to do. That's what this description is for. Um, it's 4,000 characters long. Uh, we think that's more than enough to enter in lots of information. Does anybody do anything with um, one call services, like USA One Ticket or locate, call before you dig kind of stuff, right? So those come out in email form, right? You get an email that comes out. It's a pretty standard form. That entire email can be thrown into the description field here. Um, we're working with a, a business partner who's done that. So we think that's, that's a pretty good judge of the type of information that you can add to description. If you've got more than that, that's a great example of generating a PDF and then using the attachment capability at the bottom to attach to it. Okay? So the key message here is that we're trying to keep workforce open to fit lots of different scenarios and flexible for it, but also allow you to really have it fit your needs as well. All right, so uh, I've talked about the list. I've talked about what's on the map. That's great. Let's go and take a look at the workers tab that we have here. So another thing we heard was, hey, it's great that I can see my workers on the map with relation to their assignments but I'd like to see a little bit more information. So what we did is we're giving you a workers tab here so you can see your workers in that same list format that you had for assignments. You can see a little bit of information about them, uh, such as their name. If they've got a thumbnail attached to their named user account, you'll see that as well. You can also see their workload, right? So how much work they currently have set for them. Um, if you've got their phone number set up, you could also call them as well. So the dispatcher, we use Link at Esri, so I could actually click this and give give this particular worker a call in the field if I wanted to talk to them. One of the other things that you'll notice is that we're actually breaking it down by their current status. So you can see the number of, of your, your field crews that are working or on a break or offline. So it really just gives you a view of the operational picture of your different workers in the field. Um, but the one thing that I want to highlight is this particular worker, uh, Utility Services 1, doesn't have any work assigned to them. So let's go take a look at how we can do that. So one of the common themes that we heard was that um, there's lots of different ways that you assign work, right? There's all sorts of ways. Sometimes you just let dispatchers do it ad hoc. They're responsible for setting it up. Other times you have uh, a workflow, right? Or almost a set of queries or questions you ask yourselves about how that work should be assigned. Uh, some of you have algorithms that you've written that generate what that, that set of work to be done is. Still other times you figure it out from another system. At this particular customer, the way that they do it is that the supervisor in charge of this project and the dispatcher, um, they sit down together each day and figure out what work needs to be done. The supervisor really likes the work being limited into a particular area of the map so that the workers aren't driving everywhere all over the city. So they like to get assign work in neighborhood blocks. Um, so I'm going to go in here and uh, let's zoom into a particular street that I know that we want to work on. We do that. We can see me zoom into this area. And when I clear all my filters, you'll see that I get all my assignments pop up here. So now I've got 5,300 assignments that I can filter through to try to find all the ones on this street. Um, one thing we're working on is adding the ability for you to select them on a map. Okay? But in the meantime, what you can do is you can go in and actually filter the assignments based on their location so that, whoop, so that I can find all of those assignments on this street. So you can really quickly and easily for the dispatcher be able to filter down just to get at the assignments that you need, right? You're not going to be looking at all the assignments. They rarely look at all 5,000 of these. They just really cut it down and just look at the ones that they'd like to take a look at. So I'm going to go and click these assignments and actually go and assign them to Utility Services 1. So now you can see that I've got their badging is here to indicate that it's assigned to that named user. And I can also see that the, the symbol has changed for them on the map as well. I'm going to clear all those filters, though. And you can see that, that assignment stuck. Okay? So that's a really great example of um, how you can set up, create that work, 
in either a pre-planned or an ad hoc or unscheduled way, but then also be able to assign that work. Uh, now there's one last thing that I'd like to show, uh, which is a bit of a different workflow that, that we saw this particular customer have. So what I've done here is just gone and narrowed it down to only show the assignments that are currently paused. Um, how many people have come home at the end of the day and you get a little door hanger on your doorknob saying that somebody was coming to the house but they couldn't perform the work, right? You see it pretty often. Um, you guys aren't nearly as responsive as with Jeff with your hands. <laughs> like, man, you tired them out, dude. I did. Yeah. I asked a lot of questions. You did ask a lot of questions, yeah. So this is a great example about how this particular customer is handling it. Okay, so think about how that workflow works today, right, without workforce. They have the paper work order, but where they have to go and do the gas meter exchange. They go out to that address. They can't perform it for some reason, right? One example is uh, the tree and the bushes were supposed to be trimmed around the gas meter, and they weren't, so they still can't access it. So what happens today? They write that on a piece of paper. That piece of paper goes into the truck. What happens to it then? It sits in the truck for the rest of the day, right? Do the people in the central office know that they couldn't complete that work? Not unless they talk to them right? Gets back to the office at the end of the day, then it goes on to a pile for somebody to figure out, and it just, it's a slow process, right? They took a look at workforce and changed it. So what they're doing here is when they can't actually get to a house to perform the gas meter exchange or go in to inspect the gas appliances, they leave that door hanger on the card. They pause the assignment and add the note here. This is the example where the tree was still in the way. Now the dispatcher sees this in real time. They see this change. They can monitor the paused assignments. This particular customer now has, has created a field crew who's specifically responsible for just working through these throughout their whole program. So instead of all of those piling up throughout the year to be handled at the end of the program, they're knocking them off as they go. Can you see how that latency about the time from when the work couldn't be done to when it can be picked up again is just dropped right down? So it's a really interesting use case that they, that they came across for really cutting down how that can happen. Uh, all right, so I've shown enough of the web here. Let me jump over um, and show you how Workforce works on the mobile device. So uh, this is my iPhone 6 that I have running here, and I've got Workforce running on it. Uh, I'm actually now the worker that's out in the field who was assigned those nine assignments. They're all on Ruskin um, Street, as you can see. And when I first log into Workforce, I'm presented with my to-do list for the day. So again, that list theme that we talked about, right? So the worker is able to see their to-do list about what they have to accomplish today. Um, if I needed to, I could also change that and take a look at the work that I've completed, just like they could today, right? They can pick up those paper work orders and see what they've done. I can also choose to sort the assignment list that I'm seeing in a number of different ways. And then if I want to, I can also go and change my status so I could indicate to that um, the dispatcher or supervisor in the central office, what my working status is. I could also go and filter on this. So if we go and filter on 23 Ruskin, you'll see it narrows it down. But you'll also notice that at the end of it, it tells me address, type, and ID. That ID is that work order ID. So if your workers in the field talk to each other with that identifier, if that's what they use to identify the work to be done, they can easily search for it right here to get to that particular assignment. All right, so let's go and open up that first assignment and actually start some work here. So I've opened up the details for the assignment, and you can see that as the worker, I can see a lot of the same information that I saw um, when the dispatcher was looking at the workforce web view. Um, I get a lot of info here, but I can pull this down and actually zoom in and work with the map. So I've got a very interactive experience to be able to look at the detailed information and also look at the map as well. If I wanted to, I could also go and add some notes on this particular assignment. And that's another common theme we heard, right? If you go and look at a lot of those paper work orders that you have or service requests, there's also a really big area on it that just says stuff you need to tell us that you found or saw while doing this. And it's usually notes or comments, right? But it's a way for the worker just to indicate some stuff that happened that you need to record in the field. They can do that same thing here. Uh, okay, so now that we've got that going, let's actually go and start the work. So the very first thing that I need to do from this particular assignment is get to it. Um, so I'll go and tap the action button, and what it does is present me with a list of different commands that I have available. And the first one is navigating to that assignment. So what that's going to do is it's going to actually call out from workforce and simulate really slowly me driving. They're very cautious drivers at this place. 
Um, so what it did here is it grabbed my location from where I am in the project, so where the worker is, right? They're in the central hub where they're starting their day. It then grabbed the address that it's going to, and it called out to Navigator to create the route. Did I have to copy anything or write anything down to do that? No, right? Uh, who's from Southern California here? How exciting would it be to be 120 degrees out and have to be copying that all the time, right? Or from a northern country where it's minus 40 sometimes in either scale and it's really cold outside, you've got to take your glove off. The main idea here is what we're trying to do is make it as easy for the workers as possible. We build apps that are focused on individual workflows and really tailored to those workflows. Because of that, we want to build a very seamless and easy experience between those apps, and that's what we're demonstrating here. Right? So from Workforce, I was able to call out to Navigator, and it was able to route and generate it for me um, really quickly and easily. So now that we're arriving at the location, we can see we're almost there. There we go. So now that I'm done, again, following this theme that we want to make it easy to work with the apps, I'm now prompted with whether I want to return to Workforce or stay in Navigator. So I'll choose to return to Workforce here. And now that I'm back on my assignment and at this location, I'm going to go and start it. Now, when I did that, you'll notice up here, I actually get my symbol changing from gray to green. This same change is available in the Workforce web application. So you can actually sit in the office and watch the work progressing throughout the day. Okay? So now that I'm here, I actually want to go and collect at this particular assignment. So I'll go and launch Collector. Now what it did there very quickly is it made sure I had a particular web map open, and it's the web map that I need to use with this project. So we allow you to configure that and set it up. What it also did is pan and zoom to the location I need to work at, which is 23 Ruskin Street. So I'll go and tap a new location there and choose to collect at it. Uh, and I'll do a gas inspection, and people who do inspections for a living, please don't judge me, and I'll just submit it really quickly, okay? So now that I'm here, I'm also presented with, I've submitted that, and I can choose to return to workforce at this point, and now that I'm in workforce, I could tap finish, or maybe it should have finished the work for me. Uh, I'm done, right? I did the inspection. Why isn't it finishing it for me? could make a note, exactly, right? You're not always done when you complete that work that you're doing in Collector or the other apps, right? You might need to go back and add some notes here, right? So um, I'll just do something really quickly. Took, took care of, uh, and I'll purposely put in some garbage there. So you can quickly and easily go and add this note, and now I can choose to mark it as finished. So the idea is that in the real world when inspectors and mobile workers are out there, they finish that work, they go back to their vehicle, they might write down some notes, do some other things. They're not really done the job yet, right? They might need to go grab some stuff and finish. So we try to do that same workflow here. So now that I'm here in workforce, um, I, can, uh, I finish it, I can go back to my list, and now I'm all set, I can continue on with my day. Um, so that's, uh, that's a really long demo of uh, <laughs> workforce um, on the web and also the mobile. I'm going to pass it back to Jeff, who's going to go over some stuff, and I'll, I'll show you a little, bit, uh, in, uh, a little bit more in a bit. Great. Thanks, Craig. It was a pretty good demo, actually. Thanks, man. Give Thanks. you a compliment once in a while. Thanks. Appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so an important point that Craig made was uh, how you plan for the work. One of the things I wanted to say straight off is that Workforce is not a work management system. We have no intention of building a work management system. But you can fuse work management into the ArcGIS platform. And we've got a number of customers that are doing that. Uh, for example, the city of Atlanta, um, they actually are using Infor as their work management system. But they're complementing that by using Workforce. Because what they've done in the past is they've taken the work requests that come out of Infor uh, for all the planned work and even the unplanned work uh, in the fire hydrant case that Craig actually talked about uh, and generate a work order. But then they take it and they go and they print it out and they actually uh, hand out those work orders. What they found was that uh, they started to build some dashboards to identify the, you know, the service level uh, requests and figure out uh, w at what level are they actually completing these work assignments and found that they just weren't um, because either the paper uh, work order wasn't being returned, uh, and so the job never got completed, or uh, multiple crews went out and did maintenance work on the same hydrant, so it was extremely inefficient. So instead what they did was they loaded the data from uh, Infor directly into their workforce project 
for all the planned work that they needed to do, did the work inside of Workforce and brought it back out. Um, and so using Workforce, you can kind of fuse that work management in if you'd like, or you could use it standalone if you want, if you don't have a work management system. You could just create a workforce project and create new work assignments as you uh, see fit. And we'll show you a bunch of different ways that you could create them. And as uh, Craig showed, there's lots of options for how you can uh, prioritize that work as well. Um, a couple things about uh, the workforce project. You can create a new workforce project inside of your ArcGIS organization. Right now, for the very first release, we'll support ArcGIS Online only. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the details of that uh, workforce project. We are actually creating a new uh, item type inside of ArcGIS Online to manage that project. Because of that, we'll roll that uh, workforce project into the next release of Portal for ArcGIS, which will be 10.5. Uh, but in that workforce project, uh, you set it up and you create uh, the list of assignment types. You saw Craig go through some of those assignment types uh, inside of the dispatcher's view of the, of the web application. Uh, and then um, you can configure not only the assignment types, but the workers. Um, the uh, mobile workers in the field, you can add them in, add some of their contact details, uh, as well as the dispatchers that are uh, potentially uh, creating the work. Because you may have one or more uh, dispatchers that are creating work assignments uh, in, the, in the office using the web application. Uh, likewise, you can configure the maps and the layers within the maps. So if you want to bring in reference layers into um, that web view or into the mobile view, you can add layers from within uh, your ArcGIS organization and from your ArcGIS server if you want, from hosted services, uh, any other layer content you're interested in. So you provide that additional reference data inside of the maps. And you can even create new work assignments directly off of those map layers if you want as well. Uh, and finally, you can configure the integration with the app. So uh, you may never use Navigator um, in your workflow, so why have that show up in the list, right? Um, or you can configure Collector based upon the specific web map, or Survey123 based upon the specific form that you want to use. So uh, the administration of the workforce project uh, has some really nice features to it that are quite simple to get you up and running. Uh, if you didn't use this kind of web application approach, could you just imagine all of the different things you'd have to set up? Um, because it also creates groups for you. It puts everything nicely into a folder for you, all through a wizard experience that I think you're going to show in demo. Well, not after you told them everything. Well, you can reinforce the all points. Right. Um, the dispatching capabilities that uh, Craig already showed to you, there's a lot of different ways that you can create new work assignments, uh, either by geocode, uh, by tapping on the map, um, by existing features, uh, or automatically. So we also, and I'm just stealing all of his demo th uh, thunder, uh, is uh, we've created a bunch of scripts. Or you could use ArcGIS Pro. Basically, we're providing that schema so you could load work assignments directly into the feature service any way you see fit. Inside of that uh, web application, you can kind of batch assign uh, work. You saw Craig do that with that one block uh, and all the work assignments there. So he was able to quickly uh, assign a group of um, work to a specific field worker. So you can do that in bulk. And there's a lot of filters inside of the workforce web application that really help you narrow down on what you're looking for, whether that be the worker status and their workload as you start to pile onto them the things that they need to do each day, uh, or um, the assignment view of what's been completed throughout the day. Um, so a lot of functionality that's uh, inside that web application. To talk briefly about work assignments, just the concept of them, um, there's a lot of properties to a work assignment. All of these are exposed in fields in the feature layer that is the assignments layer. Uh, anything from a status to the due date and due time, uh, the priority of the assignment, the type of assignment, who it's assigned to. Uh, and it goes through a life cycle, right? From unassigned through to completed, where um, with each of those states, we also manage a date timestamp. So if you wanted to model that behavior and look at from the time a, a work assignment went into an in-progress state to when it was completed, um, you could do the difference on those uh, date timestamps and figure out how long it's taking to complete a specific task. 
um, work has a priority, and you can sort that priority in the in the web app or in the mobile application. And one of them is actually um, special than the others, and that's uh, critical. So if you set a work assignment type, uh, sorry, uh, priority to critical, it'll pop a, a, a message up uh, where you have to acknowledge receipt of that, kind of like those annoying read receipts that Craig always sends me because I never want to read his email. Um, and I just always say no to that. But with Workforce, we're going to make you acknowledge it. Um, I think that was Craig's design because I never acknowledge his emails. And like we talked about, um, you can attach documents or photos to, to the work assignment and then open them up in the mobile application and see them. For the city of Atlanta, what was really important, more importantly, just to reassure the mobile worker that was out there that was used to paper was a plat card. So they took and loaded plat cards into the work assignment so they could open up that plat card and take a look at it. On the worker itself, I kind of mentioned that um, part of our strategy with workforce is the collaboration aspect, right? Um, so there's different types of workers. There's the dispatcher and the mobile worker. As Craig showed you, the dispatcher could call the mobile worker, or a mobile worker can search for another mobile worker. Uh, and if the contact details are there, like their phone number, hey, they could, um, if they're on iOS, FaceTime each other. Um, or um, call the, uh, you could call another uh, field worker. You might want to do that if, you know, say you're nearby another um, mobile worker, they have the specific tools or knowledge to complete the work that you are assigned, and you need that information from them. Um, also, when you're setting your working status, that's really important for not just the back office, but uh, knowing where your uh, last known location is, where you're actively working. But also, we can log a breadcrumb trail of where you've been. So then you can associate um, the movement of the field worker uh, and the, uh, their current status with uh, the work that actually is getting accomplished. We'll provide, a, if that scares you a little bit, uh, we're providing a setting that will let you turn off that breadcrumb logging. But um, when you change your status to working, we're going to log all that information for you. So you actually have that um, ability to kind of track the field worker's location in the background. So if the workforce application gets backgrounded, uh, you can still see and log their location. Yes, quick question. Well, today we, we list them as working and, uh, what do we say, on break and, and not working. And, and that's, a, that's a configured list for us. Um, at this point in time, I don't think you can change those values, right? No, we've, we've talked about, um, yeah, so for the first release, that's going to be the, the values that are there. We've talked about, um, we've heard it a couple times this week already, just add, adding the ability to expand that, maybe add a couple other. Um, values to it that would be specific, um, but nothing in the first release or, or in the update that would follow, but that's definitely one we've heard. Yeah, that's an interesting request. Um, I mean, you can kind of model that behavior, um, right? You'll know that the, the worker is working, so they're actively working, and you could see their workload, but you don't know that status of they can't leave the site, right? And that's the critical one there. Um, so that's really good feedback. Uh, so with that, I'm going to give it back to uh, Craig to do another 30-minute demonstration. All right, thanks, Jeff. So uh, here we are back in uh, the Workforce web application. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head out and take a look at the project list. So for this demo, I'm actually the project owner. So I'm the GIS administrator, the person responsible for managing content in the organization um, and creating that content. So what I'm presented with here is access to all the different projects that I have. Um, these are projects that either I created or I've been included in. Um, for the projects that I've created, I can, I can actually go and change them. So let's go and take a look at that particular project uh, that we were looking at before. So this is that meter exchange program uh, project that I was showing in the earlier demo that actually, um, but this is the project owner view of the system. So you can see I get a, a good indication of the number of users that I have and what their roles are. I can see all my assignments. Uh, I've also got some, some things here I can do, which I'll get to in a little bit. But what I'd like to do is just kind of highlight what this looks like. So these are all the different types of work that were created and configured when the workforce project was set up. Um, so this is 
With this particular site, they went and talked to the different workers and the supervisor working on this project and said, what type of work are you going to be doing in it? And that's what has been configured here. Um, so these are all the different options that you have for the assignment type when you're creating assignments uh, and filtering. So this is really a way of uh, categorizing the work that's being performed. Uh, I can also go and see a list of all the different users that I have in this particular project as well. So you can see here's all those different um, field crews that I had. Here's their phone number and so forth that I added in. So you get this, this overall view as the project owner of who's been added to your project and what the different type of work is that can be performed in it. But let's actually head back to the project list here and take a look at how you create one of these projects. So I'm going to go and hit the big call to action here to create the project. And I'll call this UC demo with some name to make it unique. There we go. Say this is my demo project. And then we'll go and create it. Um, so like Jeff was saying, what it's doing when it's creating the project is it creates the workforce project item itself, which is a new item in online, creates two web maps, a collection of feature services, puts them all into a folder that it creates, and then shares them all with a group. Do you know how long that takes you to do individually? It's 22 minutes. Because I it right did the first time? I did it a lot. No, and I didn't get it right the first time, right? Because I was the one doing it the whole time before we had this experience. Really what we, we, we realized early on was, we can't ask you to do that. You're going to look at it and just balk and say, you want me to do what? And how many feature services? And they've got to be based on a particular template and set up in a certain way. And it just wouldn't work, right? Because um, hopefully no one's business card says feature service creator on it, right? <laughs> That's just a step you do getting care, taking care of other tasks, right? Is managing items in online or in the portal. Um, so that's why we created this experience to really quickly and easily be able to go and create your project. I'm going to say quickly, it's based on the fact that um, there aren't 50 other demos going on at the time, all hitting the network at the same time. So now that it's gone and created, it created all those items um, in my ArcGIS Online. Uh, I now just have to do a few other steps to configure it to get up and running. So the first one, like I mentioned, is the assignment types. Quite, I can go in here and add a couple different types of work. Um, so for this one, uh, since this is for the UC demo, we'll call this one a technical uh, workshop, and then we'll do demo theater, and then uh, I think we'll do uh, go play hockey, because we have the Esri Canada hockey game tonight to play, and maybe head to Tin Fish for lunch, go to the bar. That's because you go to the bar to order a tin fish, not because I'm drinking beer in the middle of the day. It's very clear. I just let out the secret of how to let get it. I know, I totally let the secret out of the, now that out of the bag. Be just as long. Yeah. So I've gone and set up the different type of work that's there. So, I mean, this is a really flippant example, right? But when you're creating a project yourself, should you stress out about this? No. Go talk to the workers and the supervisors. This is how they're talking about the work they're doing in the project, right? So if we were doing a UC, we actually created a project for the UC for all of us to use in the team. You create the different type of your work you're doing at it, right? Can you create some new fee work assignments? A techno, yeah, I'll get to that, yeah. <laughs> you get to, you create the type of work that you're doing, right? So um, at any point, if you want to make some changes to it, you can go and add new assignments afterwards, right? So the main point there is you have this information already. You don't need to create it. Go talk to the people who are working on the project. They'll have that for you. So I've gone and added those assignments. Uh, the next thing I need to do is go and add a couple of workers to my project. So I'll go and add a few here. Um, let's go and add Jeff, and we'll make him a worker. And then uh, let's see who else is here. We'll go and add uh, Eric to it. We'll make him a dispatcher. He knows what he's doing. You, Good stuff. you need yeah. some guidance in the field. I do need some guidance. Yeah. Uh, and then let's go and add. Give me the tin fish one. We'll add one more. Uh, we'll make him a worker as well. There we go. So we've gone and added a collection of workers to, to the project. Um, there's a couple other things that I can do here. So I can go and uh, select Jeff and add some details. So I'll give his contact number. So he's in the 909. So we'll give what his phone number is. There we go. Please feel free to contact him with questions. <laughs> we'll give him his job title. He's a very junior presenter. <laughs> um, and some notes on this. You should probably attend training <laughs> for presenting. 
There we go. Fantastic. Now everybody in this project knows you're a very junior presenter. <laughs> Thank so you for that. You'll see this type, this is the, the job title. That could vary per project, right, that you set up here. It's also got the phone number, so you can give them a call either from the dispatcher. Workers can contact each other also through this, right? So you can open up the worker on the mobile device and actually figure out how to get to them. What's in this list here? These are all of the named users in my organization. So this is our, our org that we have in the apps team. So these are all the named users I have here. So you can see we're seeing their full name. We also see their, uh, their thumbnail as well. I've also got the different roles that, that users can participate in the project. Can a, a user be in both roles? Yes, right? Because you have situations where dispatchers need to go do field work in a project. That's usually when things are bad and the dispatchers have to go out and take care of stuff, right? But it happens and it's pretty common. Um, can a project owner be in all the roles? Yes, they can, because that's when it's really bad, when the GIS administrators have to go into the field and help out with stuff, right? My main point there is that we tried again to make this configurable for your situations. Uh, sir, you had a question earlier. Those are the types of questions I appreciate people, the ones that I've already answered, thank you. Yes. Is your question that type, sir? <laughs> Uh, so the question was, um, so the organizational user shows everybody within your organization, could we maybe just filter it down to the group? Um, that's an interesting thing. We've heard that request maybe worded a little differently in the past, which has been, I've already got a group defined with named users in it. Let me just point to that group and just have people added. Is it sort of that same thing? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's definitely something that we're thinking about. Um, that's something that we've heard more. We've actually gotten that request, and then also I've got a CSV file of named users, right, because that's how I've just done things in the past. Can I just batch load those up here? That's also something we're looking at. So the idea of pointing to an existing group and just pulling in those named users and then letting you set their roles is something that we're going to think about post-UC. Yeah, and we'll put that in our backlog and take a look at it. Uh, it's using your uh, ArcGIS online identity, and that could be an enterprise user that's set up with Active Directory, yes. Uh, or it could be using the identity store that comes with ArcGIS online. Or you can mix them up. Uh, when we get to Portal, that could be based upon a XAML provider as well. So we use OAuth in the applications to authenticate. Um, so it's really how the identity is managed inside of your organization. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's a great question. We do not support that today. The identity is individual for each of the applications, but that's something that we're looking at uh, and how we can architect that. Um, because, you know, the, the, thing, the thing there is that we need, we need to think about, um, in addition to that, potentially a shared device model where you can switch between identities as well. Did, does anyone in, uh, encounter that? Where you, they might have a an iPad or a, a tablet that's um, docked in a vehicle and a different crews are assigned that, uh, that specific device. Can I get a show of hands of that? Okay, that's good, that's good feedback. Um, those are things we're looking at doing next, so thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, through your asset management system. But no, no. That's the key difference Jeff was talking about earlier, right? You know, we're, yeah, we're not building a work order or an asset management or maintenance management system with it. You use whichever system you have. So for that example, right, when that, um, when that motor is ready and set to be go, that would trigger the request or the work order, the service request to go take care of it in the field. At that point, that's where workforce kicks in, right? And you can create that assignment, or you can script it, which I'll show in a little bit, um, how you can do that and some stuff we have for you. So you can pull it from that other system into workforce. Uh, one other thing to, to maybe consider is if related to that work assignment, 
Um, there's details about that equipment, and it could be referenced to your asset management system by a URL. We'll reference those links inside of the notes as well. So if you tap on that, you could open up and look at the asset management system yeah. if you want, and you could be able to identify whether or not it's in, it's in stock, that kind of deal. Uh, okay, so I've set up my assignments, I've got my workers and my dispatchers all set up. The next thing, I've got a big check mark here letting me know I'm all set to go. But there's one last thing that I want to highlight. Um, we've been working with the ArcGIS Online team. They added a new capability to online in one of their, their releases last year. So the map viewer that you have in ArcGIS Online, the map editor where you open it up and you can configure your web maps, that's now a component that you can call in other applications. Um, so we've worked with them to, to consume that capability that they've provided to everybody. It's not just uh, internal development. You could do that today yourselves. You could call that and use that web viewer in your own web apps if you wanted to. But we have that here. So you can see I've got the ability to actually go and open up either of my web maps that I've set. So I can go and open up the worker web map and it launches. What you're going to see is the very similar look and feel to the map viewer that you get in ArcGIS Online. So the idea is that as the project owner, the person creating this work, you can do as much as possible in the workforce web application. We really want to limit how much you have to jump out to ArcGIS Online to do it. We really want to have you do everything in here in a very streamlined way. Um, so this has the really similar look and feel to what, what you're used to seeing. I can see my list of all the different layers here. Um, this is that project I just created, so you'll see that they already come with preset symbology uh, that we're using on it, so there's nothing that you need to do there. Um, we've also got a base map set up here, but I could choose to go and use any of the other base maps that are in my organization. Maybe one of the new tiled, um, tile base maps that we talked about in the plenary on Monday, or maybe a custom base map within your own organization. We're just consuming what ArcGIS Online does here, right? So if you publish that base map within your org, it'll be displayed here in the option list. What you can also do is go and search for new layers, and Jeff touched on this, right? Your workers, when they're out in the field, and your dispatchers, they're going to need other information about how to create and assign work. Um, if you're working at maybe like a utility with a water network, you might want to have particular pieces of that water network available to the workers and the dispatchers. You might want to set up scale suppression as well, right? So that as you're zoomed out, you're only seeing the, um, the mains and not all the laterals and the smaller assets that you have. And as you zoom in, you see more information come up. You can do all that because this is just a web map, right, that we're using. So everything that you can do in ArcGIS Online, you can do here. So I could go and search for, you know, all sorts of things to find. Nothing with streets. There we go. So I can find all sorts of things that are available in my organization and add them to the map. Um, we have two web maps for a reason, because a really common theme we heard was that dispatchers in the central office and workers a lot of times need to see different views of the data, right? They might be looking at the same layers, but they might be looking at them differently. Dispatcher might be interested in certain pieces of information that a worker wouldn't. Maybe you want to change the labeling, change how it's symbolized, right? So you have that flexibility to tailor the web map for either the worker um, or for the dispatcher. So it's not my specific web map that I've created, it's your template. Correct, yeah. So let me just jump out of here really quickly while I talk and try to answer that at the same time. So it's not your web map that you've created, it's the one that we did when we laid it down. So what I'm um, looking at here is ArcGIS Online, and I've got that that project that I just created. So here's everything that was created when I created that project, right? So we created the collection of feature services that we used, we created the project, and also the web map. Um, can I ask why you'd be interested in using a web map that you had created ahead of time? Because I may already have that, you know, some of the workers don't want to pull up information, they just are familiar with this information that I need. Mm -hmm. So I'd be able to, they just pull up what's already set. Yep. So uh, I'm going to ask another question, really sorry. Uh, how many people would like that, right? You've already got a web map set up, you're thinking about using Workforce, and you'd just like to use that map or as a starting point. This is how we make decisions, so, <laughs> right? Well, it's for the people doing this, we're not going to do it, right? Like, you get either <laughs> or, you know, like. So we've heard that request also, right? That's come up this week as well as, you know, and I'll paraphrase it a little bit. Hey, I've already set up a web map. Um, maybe I use it with Collector or something. It's a variation of that, right? I just want to use that map, right? Um, so that's something that we've been talking about in the team about how we could do it. Um, honestly, we probably we won't um, set it up where you use that map. What we'll probably do is something to the effect of, um, like one thing that we've talked about is just point it and say, grab the definition of that map as a starting point and then use it to seed the creation of this one. So Around maybe something on that. URL for my web map. 
Correct. Yep. Yeah. So you just pull up this one, and it would be it would initially it'd probably look very similar to the one that you referenced, and then you could tailor it a little more if you like. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we created all that. That's good stuff. All right. So uh, I want to show one last thing uh, that's hot off the press. Um, I mean, it's uh, it's what I was trying to set up earlier here to see if we could get it going. So I'd like to show. You know, earlier I showed the uh, the integration with the different apps, right? So having um, from Workforce calling out to either Navigator, Collector, or Survey123. Jeff talked a little bit about how you can configure that, and, and we've been working really hard on, on doing that and creating things. So what I'd like to do is just open up a project here that I've got already set up and configured um, on our, our development area. And you can see that there's a new tab there, right, called Advanced next to the users. So if I go and select that, you can see I've got a couple different options here. So one thing I like to highlight is you have the ability to control location tracking, right? So whether we're tracking the location of your workers and laying down the breadcrumbs, you can either choose to enable or disable that and also set up the frequency that it happens, the interval that it's collected. Okay? By default, projects are created with this capability. So you can choose to control that. Because you might have situations in a project where certain workers um, in that project, they shouldn't be tracked at all, right? So we allow you to control it. But the other one that we've just been working on is actually adding the ability to set up these integrations. So with Workforce, we're going to give you this ability to configure the integrations that Workforce can work with. Initially, we'll be working on Navigator, Collector, and Survey123. So you can see here that I've got, for this particular project, Navigator already configured. I could also choose to go and add one for Collector. And when I do that, what it does is present me with a list of all the Collector web maps that I have access to. And I could go in here and filter this right, so that I can find the one that I'm interested in and then choose it to set it up as an integration. What that means is that when I then call Collector from Workforce, it'll open up that particular map and pan and zoom to that location like I showed earlier. Okay? What it'll also mean is that I'm only showed the integrations that I actually have. So if I go and open up that project on my mobile device and I choose the action here, you'll see it looks a little different, right? Down in the bottom, I've only got Navigate. That's the only, That's the only app that I've configured with this project. Right. Why would you see Collector and Survey123 if you're never going to use them in this project? Okay. So that's the idea, is that the project owner configures how the apps are integrated with Workforce, and then their mobile workers get that. All right, so I'm going to pass it back to Jeff uh, for the last few slides, and i got one last thing to show after. Okay. Four. Yeah, so we've spent a bunch of time talking and showing the Workforce project and its anatomy. Um, we also, in our documentation, publish the schema, because what's really important is that you should be able to script uh, how you bring that planned work in. So we want this to be very open, so we're going to provide you with all the details to do that. As we talked about, there's a new project item. We think that you should kind of get in your mind going to workforce.arches.com as a destination and then sign in uh, to manage your uh, workforce projects. But you can go into ArcGIS Online, into your content view. Think of it kind of like your uh, file folder view and navigate into the group, or sorry, the folder where the workforce project's created and then open it up uh, through that item if you'd like. And you can manage it that way as well. Um, but uh, the schema is there and, and you can see what's available as far as um, uh, uh, the, the different feature layers and their attributes and such. Uh, and we document also what needs to be populated, because there's some certain rules about populating um, uh, different types. Last thing I wanted to mention is um, for, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, is that for some kind of smaller field deployments or organizations who could abstract to that, um, workforce might be a sweet spot. It might just be all they need. They don't have a work management system. Does anyone here not have a work management system? About a third of you? Okay. It might be all that you need to do work management. Uh, creating new work assignments inside of the workforce projects that you create in your organization uh, and using the mobile applications and you're good to go. Uh, and it provides that kind of seamless integration with the apps you already have. Um, but for others that do have a work management system, um, you've got to think about fusing in with it, right? And for us within Esri, like I mentioned at the start, we're not building Workforce as a work management system. We're actually looking to our partner community to provide that fusion with it or 
as the GIS rock stars that you are with uh, Python and your use of Pro and, and other technologies, well, you have the ability to, to do that work yourself. So uh, we do have a number of partners that we're working with, um, like in the local government space with Cartograph and uh, CityWorks. But, um, and we also have integrators too, um, like the one that Craig mentioned, which is Miller Consulting, local um, consulting company that will come in and um, integrate in the one call management uh, for you, if you'd like, and right into workforce. So um, just consider that as you're thinking about the opportunities to use workforce. And if you're a partner here, we'd love to talk to you about that as well. I just kind of finalized the release dates we've been talking about. Uh, July 8th is when we're targeting the first release, the 1.0 release of uh, workforce. And that will be when the website goes live. It's in beta today. In fact, you could just go to workforce.com and sign in and start to use it if you'd like. But uh, we'll go into production with it. Um, that's when the website will go live. And the iOS app will go live as well. Uh, it's downloadable from the App Store now, but we'll, we'll finalize that. We have some updates to make yet, as you saw from, from Craig. Uh, Android's currently in beta, and uh, Windows 10 will go into beta roughly in a, couple, in a month or two. And, um, and we'll release uh, Android and Windows 10 later this fall. So if you're waiting on... Uh, how many here are waiting on Android or want to use Android? So a number of you, okay, you can use the beta now uh, and then in the fall we'll release it. How about, how about Windows 10? Anyone here using Windows 10? A number of you, actually quite a few of you, yeah. So we'll be launching a beta from that for that through the Windows Store. The way to get access our beta today uh, is through the Early Adopter Program. So if you've ever gone to that, you can sign into the Early Adopter Program uh, and you'll see Workforce uh, as a as a beta there. And you can see it off of our product page too. You can say try try it and that'll let you join the beta. You gonna show that? Yeah, okay. I'm gonna show some, yeah, right now. Yeah, and the only other thing to say on that uh, slide there is about portal support. How many people need this to be supported within portal? About a third of you as well. And so that'll come along in the 10.5 version of portal. Uh, so one one last thing I wanted to show that we also just we also just released um, was this. This is the workforce dash scripts repo um, that we have in our Esri organization. Um, so what we've done is we've created a number of scripts that get you started uh, using Python uh, to show how to do a number of tasks that we've heard quite a bit. Some in this session here actually. Um, so just to highlight those, we've got a couple different ones. They show you how to uh, create assignments from another format. We just chose CSV as a starting point, but you could choose any format. We were talking about the asset system from before, um, uh, about pulling that information in. Really, you just need a way to, to point to where that information is to be able to create those assignments and script it to load that in. Um, we've got examples that show you how to delete assignments based on a query if you want to truncate out or trim out old assignments, um, how to expect, export them out to CSV as well. Um, uh, and then uh, the last one is a, a check completion location. So this was a request we got of whether it was possible. Jeff talked a lot about the date timestamps that we have. So all the status, um, every assignment gets a, a date timestamp when it changes status. And then the location tracks also have a date timestamp. So the question we got was, do you have a way of telling us if the worker actually was near the assignment when they completed the work? <laughs> we said, uh, sure, yeah. If you want to go there, we can do that. <laughs> so that's what the check completion location uh, script is called, right? So it gets you to do that. It just shows you how to work with the location tracks for doing things, right, um, to see maybe how close they are. You can do a whole bunch of settings with it, too. All of these are really customizable. This is really meant just to give you a starting point, right? So you can go and grab, download these, um, or clone them, or you know, branch off the repo and do all sorts of stuff. So these are for you to give you a starting point. We've already got a couple ideas about a few other scripts to add. Um, from conversations this week. So I think we'll be adding to this in the next little bit too. So just something I wanted to highlight because it's come up quite a bit this week. So again, that's um, in the Esri, um, under Esri, it's workforce das scripts. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Uh, so last thing to mention uh, with the remainder of the users conference, uh, this is then sadly to say the last workforce introduction presentation. I know it's hard to believe. It's I'm gonna right. miss presenting with you. It's Craig. not right. Um, but we, uh, following this, have a mobile special interest group meeting, uh, and it's in room three just down from here if you're looking for a free lunch. 
Um, and there'll be some user presentations on some of our mobile apps, including uh, one that in, that, that's been using uh, Workforce. Um, our development team are here, and they're in the exhibit area. Um, they're kind of shy. They don't like to, we don't like to get them out too much, but so please be nice and say hi and uh, ask some questions. Um, they'd love to hear from you. This is their one opportunity to get out. Um, and uh, we have some demo theaters down there too. So if you want um, to see more demos, and I mean, you saw a lot of demo today, yeah. but if you want to see more, um, you can go down to the demo theater, and there's one at 5. Are you doing that one today? I am not doing that one at 5.30, but yes. two, two people from our development team will be doing it. Uh, they do a great job, Heather and Saranya, and they're going to be showing a bunch of ways, um, sort of uh, uh, best practices for workforce, and also showing the scripts running, which I did not. I kind of copped out and just showed you the scripts and said, go figure them out. Um, but they're actually going to show the scripts running and how to use them, and then also different techniques you can use for getting the data into the feature services. So uh, if you're not doing anything at 5.30 this afternoon, <laughs> I mean, what else would you be doing, right? Head to that demo theater. It's highly recommended. I'm assuming you're going to the hockey game. I will be at the hockey game, yes. Yeah. Uh, finally, before you go, um, the, our surveys are all online, so please fill that out and make sure you say how great we were. All right. Thank you very much for coming. and. Uh, yeah, if you got some questions, we can take questions now. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Would you like a longer, more info on that? Yeah. Yeah, so we're talking to that team. Uh, Scott runs that team, Scott Oppmann. Um, we've been talking to him about uh, how to streamline that, actually, and we've got some ideas on it. So that's going to be coming online over the next few months. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it. Keep um, keep an eye on their site. They'll be announcing some stuff for that as we make progress on it over the next few months. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Yes, sir. So when you were doing assignment types, you basically have one type of assignment that you've been assigned to already an issue. Um, is there a way of assigning multiple assignments so many different things need to be done at a specific site, huh. and when the worker gets there, he may only do yeah, that's a really good question, right? So, you know, you, we hear that word that a couple different ways when it comes up. Um, one is, you know, I, uh, building inspections is a really good example, actually, where it comes up. Um, you know, so a new building's put up, there's a number of different inspections that have to be performed, and the number of inspections and the type varies from building to building, right, based on the type. And then also, who does them can vary as well. So a lot of times we'll hear that request as um, the assignment is, you know, perform the building inspection, but then under that there's four things to be done. And the worker may do all four, like you said, at that time, or they may stop and come back and do two later on. Um, or someone else might need to do those other two, right? And how do you manage that granularity? Um, that's something that we don't really support with workforce right now, but it is something that we're looking at doing, sorry, how we could solve that problem, right, to be able to manage um, whatever it is, right? Sort of the parent-child relationship between that larger task that needs to be done and then the individual ones. So that's something that's in our backlog to take a look at, but it's not possible right now. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so uh, I'll change it a little bit. 
because I like to change questions. So uh, we've got a really cool algorithm um, that lets us assign best worker, right? And it meets your needs and it does everything that you need. How can we integrate that algorithm into workforce so that the best worker is assigned to the work, right? There's a couple ways you can do that. Um, right now, um, out of the box, there's no way to do that. But again, that is something that we're looking at is how can we provide a hook to maybe do that? That's something that we've talked about and is in our backlog. But from a scheduling perspective, you could take one of the scripts that I talked about in terms of batch assigning and creating work and actually do that, right? These are just feature services like I showed running under the covers. We document, like Jeff showed, the schema of everything. We explain to you how to set those up and what values to set. You could actually tie that into your algorithm, right? So that really the dispatching of that work is the algorithm that does it. It's not a person. Um, or maybe it's a person who looks at it and then refines it. So the algorithm does a first pass, assigns it to the best worker based on a number of pieces of criteria, and then the dispatcher comes in and refines things that sort of the boundary cases, right? Maybe you've got an area component to it, a spatial component based on territories or service areas that they might be assigned to, and you want to refine it a little bit. So that's definitely something that we've, we've talked to users about doing, business partners have talked to us about doing that as well, so it's something that is definitely supported. Um, one item that we had actually looked at including for the first release but we moved it out was um, a really simple version of that which is a sign based on district. So you could set up a layer that's uh, based on polygons and it's got who the worker is for that area, right? And then when you create new assignments in workforce it would just use that as a hint, right? Or sort of a best guess in sort of the same way we're talking about it, right? So yeah, that is something that we're looking at, but I think in the, you know, for now the best way to do it is through that scripting as a first pass and then you could have the dispatchers refine it after. Yeah. Workforce.com? Workforce.arcgis.com? So if your primary field work is just data collection, should you use workforce or collector? You should use both. So think of workforce like it's the to-do list, right, that I showed earlier. So um, when you're using paper today, right, you're going to give them a list of things to do, right? Here's what you have to do today. That's workforce, right? You can see where they go on it. And the benefit of workforce is you can see their progress. They can notify you of their progress back and forth like we showed. When it comes to do the collection, that's where you call it to collector to perform that work. So you're really using both together to do that, right? You're not going to use workforce to collect it, and you really don't want to use collector to track where they are, right? So that's why you think of workforce as giving that mobile to-do list that you can take, and collector is where you go out and gather that information. That's a great question. Thank you. That was, that was great. No, it's a great, what? Why would you think it's no when I said it's such a great question? Not yet is the answer. So we talked about that, right? We, you know, we, there's, a, there's a way that you can share information between apps you know, using something called a URL scheme. Um, that's what we're doing right now. When, you know, when I went into, um, when I showed you that super secret dev build, and said, I want to use collector and here's the web map that I want to use. We were actually storing that web map ID. And then from workforce, when we're passing that information to collector, we're also passing the lat long of the assignment. So collector is getting that information. What we've decided collector does is it makes sure you've got the right web map open and then it pans and zooms you to that lat long location. It's a pretty simple step to take to say, well, there's other pieces of information in that assignment that I would need in collector, right? The work order ID is perfect. I talked about that being what moves through the system. We've also heard a request for location. So whether it's an address or a description of where the work is, that should also be passed. That's not going to be in the first release, but it is going to be coming. We've got a design for sharing that information so that from the assignment you can share that information in a collector and make it available and then also in survey one, two, three. So not there in the first release, but that is coming. So I think the thing that we'd be interested in is, uh, so I talked about sharing work order ID and the location is there more you'd need? We don't have to talk about it now, but I don't take questions from people with red badges or red shirts. 
but come up afterwards. We can talk a little bit about exactly what you're looking for on it if, if you need more info. Is that a question or a statement? <laughs> sounded like a statement, actually. I'm now very confused about what the question is, actually. So, notes are one way, right? Yeah, it's meant for the worker to communicate with the dispatcher. Description is the other way. Description is what the dispatcher, thank you. Description is, description is what the dispatcher uses to pass back to the worker, right? Um, we thought about notes going both directions. Yeah, that's good stuff. Good. You shook your head in agreement. I appreciate that. The demo went on and on. I and on. yeah. Um, I I misspelt it so that. Uh, <laughs> mm, okay. Hmm. Um, I misspelt it so that. Uh, if I went back and showed it, you'd realize that I wasn't faking it, and it was live. So you saw the mistype. But you have called me on it, sir. Well done. <laughs> now, in terms of the spell checking, yeah, I mean, that's on. I actually don't know the answer to that. Can it spell check it? It did underline it. I just ignored it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so I did, I did the, the misspell just to show when I went back to it. I did that yesterday, I just forgot to do it today. Yeah, so that's why I misspelled on purpose. Oh, okay, I see where your question's coming from. Oh, I see. Yeah, so you entered a note, but you've misspelled it and it's wrong, right? Fix it. And it could be more severe than a misspelling. Okay. Yeah, the way, hmm, I, I think what we're going towards, right, is, is if there's a communication that has to happen between the worker and the dispatcher, right? If you're using notes to communicate things that have an urgency to them or a necessity, that might not be the best place to do it. So I think it'd be really interesting to talk about what you have in mind. Come up afterwards and we can delve into a little detail on exactly what you're thinking. Okay, yeah, so having a QA process in between that can actually confirm that it's actually done properly and, and vet it. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we don't hear that very, we hear it occasionally, but not very often. So, okay. Yes? Yep, so the question was, how can I use operations dashboard? to summarize everything in the assignment. I think that's a great example for operations dashboard, right? You can then go in and summarize based on um, time spans and be able to see all sorts of different widgets to display that information that you're looking for for it. Um, we've talked about doing maybe something in workforce for that as well, but that's not gonna be there um, in the near term. But for now, if you're looking to present to maybe stakeholders in the organization how the work is progressing, I wouldn't direct them towards workforce. That's what ops dashboard is great for, because you can configure a particular view for them to see and get the information they're looking for. Okay, so thanks for coming out and sticking around <laughs> for the questions. If you really, yeah, yeah questions here. <laughs> Yeah, so the question was for repeating or recurring assignments, you know, things that have a, a regularity to them, you know, how to handle that, right? Um, there's a number of ways you can do that. There's nothing in workforce itself that allows you to do that, that recurrence, like you would say in Outlook, right? Say this meeting is every week um, on Wednesday kind of thing. We don't have that. That is something that's in our backlog to take a look at. In the interim, what we do recommend, and a lot of beta users are doing this now, is doing that through scripting, right? So you can script the creation of that and plan out how far in advance it goes. 
You know, one idea is, would you really want all 52 of those in the project? Maybe, or maybe not, right? Yeah, so if you don't, yeah, so if you don't, that's okay, right? You can have the script run every week, and it regenerates those new assignments, or resets existing ones. You could do either. We see most people going towards recreating them, because then they have a record of each assignment that was done individually. So you have that run Sunday night, and then Monday morning, they're all available in there for the dispatcher to see. So that's the technique we see a lot of people using for the time being. But supporting that idea of recurring or repeating assignments is something that we'd like to tackle. Um, it's just not there right now. Any other questions? <laughs> yes. No, no, I would, no, no, there's a user about, I'm asking. All right, yes, sir. So the question was, I've got my workers out in the field driving from uh, one assignment to the other, and I assign them a critical assignment. So like Jeff was saying earlier, with a critical assignment, they're a little different. The worker actually has to acknowledge that they've gotten that work uh, and indicate that they've received it. Um, what happens, right? If the app's running in the foreground and they're able to see that app and running, they'll get a notification within the app. Um, and it will be styled differently. They'll see red styling around it to indicate that it's critical, and they'll have to acknowledge that assignment, and then the dispatcher can see that acknowledgement in the back office to see it. Um, if it's running in the background, we're a little beholden to um, iOS and its notification services, so they'll see it. Um, they might not see it with the urgency that you'd want them to, uh, so it could be a delay there when they see that notification, but they will see it, and then they'll have to acknowledge it to communicate that to the central office. Do I still have a job? I'm good. I'm still on the team. All right. <laughs> yes. Is it the type of thing where they kind of go to an area and just do some work, like to a park? Like what kind of stuff is it that they're performing? Yeah, well, right now we just have, we're like more in access, so we have, you know, we print out these forms and the supervisor kind of gives it out to people, but as things pop up, he's really the only one that knows where they are at that time. Like I don't know where they're like in the office. Okay. Yeah, we were actually talking to a user um, yesterday uh, who's not using any assignments at all in the project. They're just using it to see where workers are. Now, it, it's for a bit of a different scenario um, and has to deal with uh, policing, but they're using it to actually see where those workers are, what their status is. Uh, you could take that a step further. You could start there and take it a little bit further, right? And then say, well, let's see where they are in relation to areas of work that need to be done. So you could start it off with no assignments in the project. You're simply just using it to see where those workers are as a way of managing that. So that's one option you could use for it. Um, we could talk a little bit more about maybe specific things if you want to talk offline after. Yeah. That last call. My man, last. Yes. It's great you have loads of questions. I don't want to make it sound like I'm upset. It's awesome. So I work in development, so I will pass it over to my product manager to answer. <laughs> Well, you can give me your credit card information and I could hook you up with Workforce for straight away. <laughs> Why wouldn't you answer it that way? I don't know. Um, now, Workforce is included as part of your ArcGIS organization. So all the roles that we talked about, like the dispatcher and the, the mobile workers, they need to be their own unique named users. Just like if you've set up Collector, um, it's just a named user. So there's no additional cost um, other than that. Correct. 
AVO. No, we're just using the location services. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that, that so the question was, you know, we don't have a work order system, but we'd like to use that field and enter a unique value in there. Um, do you care what that value is? Do you care if it's a number or if, yeah. I think it depends a little bit whether you want to control that value a little bit, right? Sort of, sort of, so a true sort of unique work order ID. Yeah, right, so it's not just like an integer, right? I'm working on 42, what is that, right? Um, that's something we've heard quite a bit about this week. Uh, I think we've got some ideas about how we could do that um, and add that capability. It wouldn't be there in the near term, um, especially if it's alphanumeric, um, but that's definitely something that we're gonna take a look at. But for the time being, yeah, you'd have to enter it in and generate it from another system or generate it from some other, some other sequence. But yeah, you could script it. Yep, totally. Yep, you could. Yep. Yep. Any other questions? <laughs> Can you uh, optimize that assignment to add other Oh, that's a great question, too. Yes, you can. But they're never going to show in workforce. Well, not never in terms of the scope of time, but I mean right now. So, I don't know what that I don't know what that meant actually. Sorry. Um, yeah. So you can go and add as many fields as you like to that assignments feature service, right? Yep. And would you want that field to be available to the dispatchers and the workers to see? Yeah, so that's, that's a request we've gotten. So there's two things there, right? One is, hey, can I add other fields to the assignments feature service? Sure, you can do that. We get that request for people who want to store other information with assignments and not expose it in workforce so they can use it with other systems. Um, but the other request is, you know, assignments have almost everything I need, but I just need one other piece of information and I don't want to put it in description. I don't want to put it in notes. It's not work order ID because that's going to be confusing. Just let me add a field and then just let me see it, right? We've talked about supporting that. Um, yes, yeah, so when I say never, I mean it's never going to show up in your app if you stare at it right now, right? But we've talked about adding that. I know it was very confusing. We've talked about adding that and then um, adding the ability to expose it. That won't be in 1.0, so it won't be in the first release, but it is something that we're thinking about in, a, in a, a soon release, right? So um, we're gonna be doing an update in um, about a month after we release to pick up some bug fixes and a couple other improvements. It probably wouldn't be there, but I could see us doing it relatively soon, is add that capability, because we've heard quite a bit about it this week. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you, thank you.